Hello, let's continue with our variables and our transform position. We created this move x variable before, but we haven't used it yet. Because this is not a good idea to add static values to our vector like that. Sometimes it is good if we are using only ones and we are not going to change it really, then it might be a good idea, no problem at all. But normally we want to use some variables to specify this vector 3 and other values that we are using really. So instead of this 2f, we actually want to use this move x variable. So let's copy it and paste it here. But at the moment it's not defined. We don't know what the value is inside of this variable because we didn't specify it. Let's specify it in our start method for now. We'll change it later but I just want to show you that this is possible. And we assign this to f to it as it was before really. So it stays exactly the same. It was 2f in here and now it is 2f in here as well because we are passing this variable in here and the variable holds the value of 2f. So now if we switch back to unity and press play we should see exactly the same thing. It's moving right with the speed declared at the top. But now we want to decide if we want to go right or left. And there is a special method for that. So let's go to this update method and use our move x variable and try to assign some user input value to it. So if we want to decide about some input we'll just type input. Then we'll use a dot. And because we want to decide about the horizontal axis, we'll just type get axis like so. But the computer doesn't know what axis we're going to use, whether we are using horizontal or vertical. So now just add parentheses. And as you can see in this tip that is showing up, uh, our method get axis is expecting a string axis name. So we have to provide this axis name. And the axis name we can choose from horizontal and vertical. But how to know it? How to know the name of it? And it has to be typed exactly as it is with the capital letter and you can't get it wrong. Because it is specified in Unity. So we are using something that Unity prepared for us. If you go to edit and now project settings here in where is it input manager and axis there are a few axes that we're going to use later on as well and there is a horizontal one so as you can see the horizontal axis will work when we press the left and right arrow key a and d and as well the horizontal axis is repeated down here and it is used when we will be using some pad or joystick. So we are covered with our keyboard and with our pad. Whenever we just plug it into our computer we might use it. So the same thing will be with vertical but we'll talk about it a bit later. So now we can actually get rid of this because we don't need to assign any value to it at the beginning. We just want to assign the value to this variable whenever we press something on our keyboard. And we are all covered now. Let's go through our code and see if we understand it. We define the speed value and assign some value to it. Then we define our move x variable. It stays empty. We haven't assigned any value to it yet. In the start method we're doing nothing and then we go to the update method and in here we use this variable, this float variable and assigned an user input to it. So whenever you press arrow left or arrow right there will be some value returned and it will be assigned to this move x. 
So what value is going to be return? It will return the values from minus 1 to 1. So whenever you press right, the value will be 1. So in this move x, here it will be 1. So this is a positive number. So our dot will be moving to the right. If you press left, this method will return minus 1. So here it will be minus 1. In that case, our dot will be moving to the left because it, the value of this whole expression will be negative. So we will be adding a negative number. So it means it will go to the left. And if you don't press anything, there will be just 0 from that method. So if you put 0 in here, 0 multiplied anything give, gives us 0. So our dot will just stay stationary. It won't move at all. So this is how it works. Just to keep in mind that this input get axis just returns the number from minus 1 to 1. If you press left, it's minus 1. If you press right, it's 1. If you don't press anything, just 0 and nothing happens. So let's save it and go back to Unity. And now, if we press play, nothing should happen. It should stay at 0, 0, 0. Now I press A and we are moving left. Now I press right, we are moving to the right. Like so, it's working fine. So this is how we are starting to move our object. At the moment, if you notice, once I Maybe you can't notice it really, I can notice it because I see my keyboard and know when I'm pressing or releasing my keystrokes. But probably you can see it on your computer now that whenever you press or release, there is some a time where this dot is like increasing or decreasing its speed. This is because these uh, values that is being returned goes from 0 to 1. This is not like either 0 or 1. There are some values in between. So it looks like this dot is like accelerating. If this is something you want to achieve, then no problem, just leave it as it is. But if you don't want this effect, it's enough if you just type get axis row. In that method, we either have minus 1, 0 or 1. There is nothing in between. So now if I save it, you'll see that our dot is getting its full speed straight away and it stops straight away. Once I release the key, it just stops. There is no, this, you know, extra sliding or, you know, extra slowing down at the end. So it's really up to you, whatever you like most. So now we want to cover our horizontal line as well, which is really easy to do. Let's just copy this float move x and just paste it below and we can change the name of it because there can't be two the same variables of the same name so just change it to move y and now we can copy this line as well because we have to assign get axis row with the vertical line as well and there is a really handy shortcut in Visual Studio Code to duplicate the line, which is Shift, Alt and Arrow Down. Shift, Alt and Arrow Down. This copies or duplicates the line of the code. And now we have to only change Y. So we are assigning this value to the new variable that is responsible for up and down direction. And we have to change the axis name for vertical. The vertical we can check it in edit, project settings, in input manager, axis and here you have it. There is a vertical axis and it provides a value for pressing up and down arrows on your keyboard or S and W. Okay, let's close it and go back to the code because we are not finished yet we created this variable, we assigning some value to it based on the user input, but now we have to of course change this value in our vector 3. So in here we have to add our variable name. 
our vector was set to 2f and now the max value of move x or move y is 1 or minus 1 so our speed has decreased in order to make our dot quicker of course we have to increase the speed value let's put it on 3.2 of course it's up to you how fast you want to have it so just play and now just press you know up and down right and left and it all should work fine but now there is one more thing that you might have noticed if you press right or left it's going with that speed but now when I press up the vectors are being accumulated and whenever we go you know diagonally it is faster I don't know if you can see it but this is the way it is so we might do something more we can make our vector 3 normalized so just put dot and say normalized in that case the speed value should stay the same and now I press play and see if it made any difference and I think you can see that it did we're going left and now we're going diagonally with the same speed so this is like ready solution for moving your object in X and Y direction and it's all done and ready and as you can see there are three variables declared at the top and then we have like three lines of code of course we are using those variables only in the update method at the moment so we could just you know make them all in that place and that would make no difference for us at the moment it depends how you're going to structure your code and what functionality you want to achieve I normally use forces so I so I need to get access to those variables from different methods that's why I like to define them at the top but in this example it would be better solution to do it this way we can go back to unity and check if that made no difference and if we play it you can see that this is exactly the same so it's up to you whether to put them all in that function and make those variables local or just put them on the top and make them a global scope this is how we call it if they're accessible from many methods they are global scope if they're accessible only within the method they have a local scope 